All right. Good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for February 6, 2024. Uh, Jay, I, I need you to start using the campfire chat room as the way to ask questions, because that way everybody that's in the chat room can see that and they may be able to give you uh, information, answers and it'll alert them to some ideas instead of me being your information broker. So uh, I sent you the invite to Campfire, so let's start using that as the primary means of communication. So this comes from one of our uh, long-term uh, students. Uh, I've got him building uh, a course on how, to, on how to do this one. This is a intraday system on the uh, Aussie US dollar pair. It's intraday only. Um, it's 28 days of trading with a breakout strategy. It averages about one and a third trades per day with no overnight risk. It has a winning ratio of 5.3 to one. Um, in terms of winning days versus losing days. Uh, and the SQN greater than two, it's actually, if you look at the total number of trades and take um, take the square root, you get a system quality number on 28 trades of 3.6. If you normalize that to 100, the thing is cruising around 6.7. Very strong signal to noise ratio. Annualized R, pretty good. Expectancy of 0.9. The uh, the average wins are 1.33. Average losses minus 1.5. So it's essentially a five to one coin flip uh, that pays eight to nine, meaning slightly less than a one to one payoff, but you're getting an extraordinary winning rate um, based on uh, probabilities. So that's pretty good stuff. Um, another research project that we, and this comes out of the annual research weekend stuff that uh, Luke provided to us. So if you haven't subscribed to that workshop or become a student of that one, it's uh, you're missing some pretty good stuff. Uh, this is one that came up in a coaching session with um, Griffin Cooper and I. And what I asked him to do was do a visual study of the following trading rules. And I told him that you're really going to like it when you do. So um, if you go back to like October 2022, so that's about 18 months. And I said I wanted you to com I wanted him to compare the RL30, that's the moving regression line 30, and the SMA30. And so what I wanted him to do was highlight in green all the conditions where the RL30 slope is positive, and the RL30 is faster or higher than the SMA30. So if you think about that, the the RL30 is this black line, right? So after a harsh winter, what you know is the the RL30, let's say if we just start from here, the RL30 dips much deeper and steeper than the SMA30. So if we just take this segment here, this is where it reversed, and then it went up to here in a very smooth and orderly fashion, peaked right about here, and then started getting negative right about there. Uh, and then it went down to here where it bottomed out. So in the time that the RL30 went from here to here to here, the SMA30, which is also based on a 30 period moving average, that's the middle of the river, moves like this. So it's, it doesn't go as steep down and it doesn't go as steeply up and it is smoother at the turning points. So that is a slower 
moving average. Notice that the um, the RL30 turns before the SMA30, and so it crosses at interesting moments. And it crossed here before the SMA30 rolled over. So it is already given you, this is kind of the upward, the upward um, excessive gains. And then this is the lower excessive gains. So we, so we marked off four different color codes, right? So in green, it's really bullish market condition and it's okay to take longs. And that occurs when, like right here, the RL30 is greater than the SMA30. You can see that it, it crossed over and now it's higher. So that's good. And the RL30 slope is positive. That's a good thing. That's like being in the summer of a MACD histogram. Now, when the RL30 slope is the RL30 value is better than the SMA30 value, but the RL30 slope is negative, that's what happens here. That's when that thing rolls over. And now the slope of the 30 is down, but it's still higher than the SMA30. And that's where you get these yellow zones. That's a warning sign that says, maybe that long, beautiful summer is over. Be careful, take Make sure your stop is in play. It's not an exit, but make sure that your stop is where you want it. So don't add new positions. Hold the positions you have, but make sure that you've watched the stops. The next condition is when the RL30 is less than the SMA30 and the RL30 slope is negative. And you would think of that as the as the winter. That's what this looks like. It, the slope of the RL30 is negative and it's below the SMA30. So this is all bad. So you don't want any long positions in that. So no long positions. And then you might take some tactical short positions, but remembering that those opportunities are shorter in duration. So you should have a bearish output, uh, outlook on the market, no long positions. Shorts are tactically okay. And then finally, when you have the RL30 is less than the SMA30, but the RL30 slope is turned positive. That's what happens here. The RL30 in black is lower than the SMA30 in red, but the slope is up until it crosses here, and then it gets into the green once more. So what I asked them to do was to take the current condition and just go back 18 months on daily charts and color code each day in the market and see what you get. And I, what I want you to notice is that the green categories with a little bit of yellow caution catches all of the big moves, every single one of them. And that the red moves, when the RL30 is less than the SMA30 and the slope is down, that protects you against really uh, any of the vicious downward moves, like right here. You avoid all of the danger and you get all of the gains with those four simple rules. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the SPY, that is a really good market classification system. And it's based on statistics and math. And oh, by the way, this also works in Forex if you look at the three-day chart instead of the dailies, watch what happens here. Watch what happens on this one. What you want to notice is that um, you want to follow 
the pathway of the RL30, that's this black line that I'm now tracing is red. When that slope is, when that rolls over, you better be paying attention because what happens next is all of this. Here's where it crosses the SMA30. So that's the 30 crossing the 30. Now things get really bad. And now this is where it starts to get a little better. There's opportunities tactically, and then it rejects. And so it's terrible. And then it's possible, possible. It's terrible. And it loves it. Now, that's on a three-day bar on the Aussie US dollar. That's a tradable system long-term forex glacier type moves now this is one where after an extreme winter you get where it crosses the bollinger band main you get all of the summer and then this is where it warns you about heading into the into the fall now what i want you to notice is this rollover period here protects you against all of that painful selling And this little strategy, now when I add the RL10 in as a early warning, look what we have here. We have a one, two, three entry getting ready to start and you have the slope of the 10 starting to roll up. And so this could end up being an SSC style, but also a Kata 2 in the long-term Forex posture. So this is where the Aussie US dollar could be getting ready to make a five cent move from 0.65 to 0.7. That's a really good move. And we've already seen one leg up, a smaller leg down, and this could be the turning point of the next one. So those of you that are trading the Aussie dollar ought to be paying attention to that. So this. This is a gentle introduction to the three-day, nine-day. This also works on the nine-day. So the RL30 versus SMA30 is really important. And now here's the final insight to this. The RL30... Uh, when it rolls over, when you see that thing, look how orderly that move is. That also is the demarcation for the owl, the owl entry after after a long and strong move. And the RL30 cannot make any new headways and it starts to roll over. As so, the last thing that happens in the owl is the RL30 rolls over. So if you just take a look at when the RL30 rolls over, you have a conservative yet very timely alert to different market conditions getting ready to happen. You get this and this and this. And the, these were actually, these little turning points right here were actually tactically tradable. There just wasn't any follow through. But meanwhile, the primary trend down was tradable in each one of those legs. And now you get the mother of all moves right here. And then if you are watching that, your early alert is when the RL30 rolls over. Your next alert is when the RL30 fast crosses the SMA30 slow. And now you're really getting that favorable condition to the upside that's in the green. So this orange zone is a warning that says right here, you should be ready for that long move down to be over. And you could actually start getting that entry around here instead of here. So you get paid a premium by being alert to early warnings of changing market conditions. That is a multi-million dollar idea. That's all I'm going to say about that.
All right, let's take a look at the 30 minute charts, 30 minute hybrid swing. And we're looking at Alcoa, 30 minutes. Uh, this was yesterday's gap down trade, and we uh, held it overnight. It started moving up at the open, so we covered that short. And because this was an SSC, we got long right here. That was a stop and reverse. And that thing mangled its way north and then exited here uh, just before the close. One unit of risk one unit of reward, one R, and maybe maybe this is the local bottom. So now we can start tracking these different price levels where the RL10 and the Dragon are changing, and those become the price levels on the way up. You've heard me say that a thousand times in the foundations course, and I'm going to keep saying it as long as it's true. AI, uh, this one is a gap reversal, right? So this was yesterday's nothing. We got a little trade yesterday and then exited after the one, two, three, and there were no signals in here, so we didn't do anything. And today it gapped up to here and then started moving up. It moved a risk box off that low, so I got long. And this thing ran all the way up to here. Then as it came back, I exited there for about 0.5. It sold off all the way to here and then resumed back through the VWAP. So I got long again here after it crossed the VWAP right there. And there's my wrist box. And it ran all the way up and then closed at plus 2R. And uh, that's AI. And that was a really good reversal move today. That's day one of a reversal after a long sell-off. So I'm holding that one overnight, uh, looking for a gap up. And it doesn't hurt that that was the single biggest gainer of the day. So I, I like holding success. Caterpillar tried the long on the, uh, uh, there was a little breakout above the dragon in here and it failed quickly for one hour loss. Cliff, uh, I tried the one, two, three entry, it lost half an hour. CVS, um, this one was, yeah, everything in the yellow is today, right? So that was a gap up to here. There's my standard risk. It's crossing the Bollinger Band main. The, the VWAP looks like this. Uh, so this crossed both the Bollinger Band main and north of the VWAP. So I put that entry on, ran all the way up to here, and then started to decay, came back to the edge of the dragon. That's my exit. So on one unit of risk, this one is 1.5. No overnight risk. Uh, DIA tried the one, two, three entry, uh, scratch. Disney, beauty. So this was immune to the sell-off from earlier in the week. In fact, it's been making higher lows in the R10s. It's north of the Bollinger Band main. It broke through the PSAR today. I buy it here with a standard risk. It just goes up like a scalded ape at one, two, three R. I finally wake up and say, hey, dummy, put a second position on. I do. It runs up here and then closes at the absolute high of the day. One, two, three, four. So this one is seven R. This one is four R. That's 11R cushion, and I'll hold that overnight because that looks really good on a daily chart. That looks like Disney is back. Devon Energy, fractional. 
emerging markets, big gap up, very little follow through after an initial surge. This, this at first looked promising because it entered here, it ran all the way up here and then fell back to the VWAP. So I took the no lose plus dinner for two compared to that. I thought about the re-entry, it would have performed well, but I, I don't like uh, entering EEM twice in a day. I like to, I'd like to see it work all at once and then nothing. Um, Ethereum, this was a big gap up. Uh, here was yesterday's close. Here was the gap up. It continued to go up 